guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're tackling yet another problem in the, term, in the realm of thermodynamics, uh, mass balance, energy balance, and a control volume. We're still talking about that. And it's again a nozzle problem, right? So we have this nozzle here. In this case, it's um, water, right? So steam that's entering the nozzle here. And then the nozzle, as by definition, has a a smaller aperture on when it's leaving on the outlet and what we're doing is we're doing a trade-off between you know uh, internal energy of our steam going into a higher kinetic energy on the outlet um, so if you haven't watched the other problems around this, uh, this these are building on top of each other right so the first one we did you can check out here is just you know simple mass analysis no need to evaluate internal energies and enthalpies and all that, whatnot um, and then the second one we did was already on the nozzle, right? So it's problem on the nozzle, but then we only looking at enthalpies. It was an adiabatic uh, nozzle, so therefore one thing less to worry about. So this is the third one on the series, and then um, really recommend you being familiar with the other two and being comfortable with the other two before jumping into this one. So the problem statement reads for problem 5.28. Steam enters a nozzle at 400 degrees Celsius and 800 kilopascals with a velocity of 10 meters per second and leaves at 300 degrees Celsius and 200 kilopascals, while losing heat at a rate of 25 kilowatts. For an inlet area of 800 centimeters squared, determine the velocity and the volume flow rate of the steam at the exit. So we have steam. That's already different from what we had before, right? So we're talking about steam this time. So no ideal gas, no... Um, no way to use C sub P, C sub Vs, we need to focus on steam tables, right? Um, what else? We are entering at 10 meters per second with a set of properties that are 800 kilopascals and 400 degrees Celsius, right? And we're leaving this nozzle at, what are the properties? 300 degrees Celsius and 200 kilopascals. So again, note that we're the steam that's entering this nozzle has a higher internal energy. The molecules have more energy than the ones that are leaving. Okay. Um, what else? We know the area now. This time we know the area. So the area, Fox sectional area. So this guy here, right? This area here is 800 centimeters squared. You can force CS needing to convert this into meters squared very soon. Um, what else? Oh, and we're losing heat. So this is not adiabatic, right? So we have a heat loss of 25, 25 kilowatts. And this is super relevant. Okay. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the velocity here at the exit. And also the volumetric flow rate. So the rate meters cubed per, and actually this is a good idea. Let's just write down. Looking for an answer in meters per second and an answer in meters cubed per second. Okay. Beautiful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this diagram by just drawing a box. Okay, this is my new nozzle. It's just a box. And in the, this box, I'm going to put everything that's entering, all the mass that's entering and leaving, and all the energy that's entering and leaving. Okay, so I have my mass, and by the way, I'm going to call this state one, I'm going to call this state two, and I'm going to call this just Q. All right, so what we have here is we have mass flow rate one going into the box. And then we have mass flow rate leaving the box too, right? In terms of energy, I have the enthalpy one entering the box, and I have enthalpy two leaving the box, but I also have Q leaving the box. Okay, and then note that this box is you know my control volume. So what I'm interested in is you know what's happening within this control volume, um, and the two things that are right out of the gate that we can see is that there's the, the mass balance dictates that you know the mass flow rate one has to be equal to the mass flow rate two because of the continuity equation and again all this is saying is you know there's not steam accumulating inside this box right over time whatever the amount of molecules I have inside the box is going to remain the same you don't have you know steam less or you know the amount of molecules decreasing inside the box either right so there's an equilibrium situation there and then the other thing that is right off the bat is that the combination of these two energies here has to come from this guy here, right? Because we can't create energy, right? So therefore, enthalpy one has to be equal to enthalpy two plus enthalpy two plus Q, right? Now, I don't want to 
maybe instead of just calling it entropy, I'm just going to call it energy, right? So I'm just going to call it energy. Energy 1 and energy 2. And then I can break this down into whether it's entropy and, and other things or, or whatnot. But the idea here is that we're not creating a destroying energy, right? So what we can do is we can break this down again like we did before. We can break the what energy means really into all those things. We talked about internal energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, flow energy, etc., etc. And then we did all the analysis. Again, you can check the analysis here so that we don't have to waste so much time. And we ended up with the idea that this is, you know, enthalpy in state one plus kinetic energy in state one, which has to be equal to enthalpy in state two plus kinetic energy in state two plus heat, right? And this is going to be slightly different now because heat is not related to the mass. The other ones are, right? These guys, these energies are related to the mass going in and out of our system. Heat is not. So it's not sufficient for us just to know the mass flow rates are the same because of continuity. This guy here, we're actually going to need to find out some more information about the mass to be able to solve this, right? So what we do here is I'm going to do the same process we did before. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do on both ends, I'm going to you know, multiply by mass one and divide by mass one on both ends. So it's, you know, same thing as multiplying by one. Um, except that when I divide this by mass one, I have the equivalent of our lowercase one. It's just kilojoules per kilogram. And when I divide this guy here, if you recall, this is mass one, velocity one squared divided by two and divide by mass. I'm just going to end up with this, right? So <clears throat> in other words, just putting the mass in evidence and then same thing from the right hand side. If I put the mass in evidence, I'm going to end up with lowercase velocity 2 squared over 2. But, but this piece here for the Q, I actually end up with the mass also dividing, right? Because there's no relationship with heat, that mass there. So know that if I were to multiply this again, this would be uppercase H. This would be mv squared over 2. And this guy here would just be q. So we'll just go back to exactly what we had over here, right? So no changes there. And then what I can do is I can derive both right hand side and left hand side of the equation with respect to time. And we're going to end up with the same conclusion we had before. Entropy in state one is not going to be changing over time. The velocity of one is not going to be changing over time. So it's going to be the five, was it five? I think it was five. Um, five meters per second, no, 10 meters per second, 10 meters per second. Uh, over here, same thing. This is not going to change. This is not going to change. The rate of heat is not going to change. It's always going to be the 25. What does change is actually the mass because we don't have a constant mass. We have a mass flow rate, right? So what this ends up what ends up happening is that we have, let's do this. Let's copy this guy here. <clears throat> we'll copy this guy here like so. And we're going to end up with the rate of mass in respect to time. Over here, same thing, the rate of mass in respect to time multiplies all these guys here. And this is also mass flow rate just there. All right. So when this happens, then our equations it looks more complicated, but somewhat simplified because this is, you know, if we choose to use the, the simpler version, it's going to be M1. And over here we have M2. Over here we have also M2. You know that. So this is a mass flow rate for M2. Okay, and then um, what we can do now is, again, M1 and M2 are the same. They have to be the same. So therefore, I can divide everything by M2 or everything by M1. And I'm going to be left with our, um, with, our, um, with our simplified version, which is H1, V1 squared over 2, over here, H2, V2 squared here, over 2. And then this guy, we can't get rid of the mass. Okay, so it can be mass flow rate one or mass flow rate two, doesn't matter. This guy's gonna have, um, because they're the same, right? This guy's gonna have the mass flow rate component still attached to it. All right, so um, now what we can do is solve for this because what we need to find is the velocity at the end of the pipe. That's what we're looking for, right? The unknowns here are we know the velocity, so the ve well, we know the velocity, we know the, the flow rate there. You know the, the 25 kilowatts. What we don't know is, um, let me just put this here because we don't right, right in respect to time. Uh, what we don't know is what is the enthalpies, which we can find out. What is the mass flow rate, which we need to find out somehow. And then when we do that, we can finish off and find the velocity.